Hi, thanks very much for, uh, for joining me today. I'd like to tell you about uh, Brainstorm Cell Therapeutics. I will be... I will be making forward-looking statements uh, during this presentation. So Brainstorm is a uh, differentiated stem cell company. And what I mean by that is uh, we have a platform technology that is based on mesenchymal stem cells, but it is a, uh, uses a proprietary platform uh, for, deliver for differentiating mesenchymal stem cells into a, um, a, dr a biological drug delivery system for the delivery of neurotrophic factors. We have a broad series of patents on the cells, methods of producing them, and methods of using them. And these cells are in development for a variety of neurodegenerative diseases. We have a fast track ALS program that's in phase two. Um, and I will give you an update on that program and discuss some of the data that we've presented over uh, the past year. Um, in, in briefly, uh, we've had uh, seen so far in this program an excellent safety profile and a strong efficacy, efficacy signal in two clinical trials that we conducted in Israel. We recently completed enrollment in a phase, randomized double-blind placebo-controlled phase, phase two trial here in the US, and we have plans to launch our first multi-dose study uh, later this year. We're targeting additional indications in the clinic um, over the coming years. We have preclinical proof of concept data in a variety of preclinical disease models in various neurologic diseases, including Parkinson's, Huntington's, autism, MS, and peripheral nerve injury. And we are um, working now on, a, uh, uh, on moving progressive MS towards an IND filing. And importantly, we are well financed through, um, through the read, expected readout of our phase two trial. So um, our MSC NTF, or neuron cells, uh, are, are illustrated on this, on this slide. Uh, we begin with bone marrow-derived MSCs. We expand them under proprietary conditions and then have uh, proprietary differentiating conditions in which, as you can see illustrated here, we're able to induce these cells to secrete neurotrophic factors. Here, the cells are stained by immunofluorescence for GDNF and BDNF. And you can see MSCs prior to differentiation uh, show little or, uh, or no cyto cytoplasmic staining for these growth factors, whereas we see uh, high levels and, and uniform staining after the differentiation process. Um, on this slide, we have illustrated patient data from the 26 patients treated in our Israeli clinical trials. These are uh, GDNF, BDNF, VEGF, and HGF, which are the four neurotrophic factors that we look at during the manufacturing process. Each of these has been shown to exert uh, beneficial effects on neuronal survival in, in a variety of in vitro and in vivo systems. Um, what we have illustrated here in blue and red, the, the blue bars are the MSCs from, uh, from these patients prior to the differentiation process, uh, and red is the secretion of these growth factors uh, post-differentiation. And you can see that there's a robust upregulation, a robust increase in the secretion of each of these growth factors. Um, like uh, many autologous uh, products, we see variability, patient-to-patient -patient variability, um, but we never fail to see induction of secretion. And we see a uh, very similar pattern, if not identical pattern, with um, cells taken from healthy volunteers as well. So we have no evidence that uh, cells taken from ALS patients behave any differently than cells taken from healthy volunteers. We don't know yet which, if any of these, any combination or particular factor is critical in determining clinical efficacy. That's data as we move towards larger uh, clinical trials that we hope to be able to, uh, that we hope to be able to sort out. Uh, as I mentioned, our cells have been extensively studied in a variety of, of animal models, uh, including Parkinson's, Huntington's, uh, ALS, of course, uh, multiple sclerosis, um, and variety of peripheral nerve injury models. The initial clinical fo focus of Brainstorm has been on ALS. Um, ALS uh, is a, certainly a disease that's gotten a lot of attention over the last uh, uh, year and a half or so with the ice bucket challenge, so people are a little bit more familiar with it. But very briefly, um, it's a primary degenerative disease of motor neurons, is relentlessly progressive, marked by steady declines in motor function, and life expectancy is only three to five years from diagnosis. There are tens of thousands of patients in the US um, 
um, and, and the EU. Um, it is an unmet medical need. There's only one approved drug in the U.S. which uh, does extend the time to survival or uh, tracheostomy, but has not been, has not been shown to provide any functional benefit for these patients and is not uh, a disease-modifying agent. Uh, so it is an unmet medical need and certainly represents a large commercial opportunity should we be successful in, in developing neurone. This is a snapshot of our clinical program. We've completed two trials, as I mentioned, in Israel. A total of 26 patients were treated in those two single-arm studies. We've completed enrollment um, and, and just completed the last uh, treatment, in fact, in our U.S. Phase two trial, which enrolled 48 patients. It's a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial with a three-to-one randomization. So between these studies, we've now treated over 60 patients uh, with our cells. Uh, additional uh, handful of subjects, patients received um, treatment in a compassionate use program in Israel, and we are planning on uh, a launching this a multi-dose study, uh, which I'll tell you a little more about in a couple of slides. Um, this is a, a summary of the, of the two Israeli studies, which shared a similar, uh, uh, similar design. Both studies featured a three-month run-in period. These were single-arm studies, so we're not able to make a comparison to placebo, but we followed patients for three months, assessed them monthly, so we had a, a sense for their baseline rate of disease progression, both in terms of ALS-FRS, which is a functional rating score used in ALS clinical trials, as well as force vital capacity, a measurement of lung function. During the last few weeks of this run-in period, we manufactured the cells, administer them, and then follow for six months afterwards, uh, and, and I'll show you the efficacy data. Um, the phase one, two study enrolled both late stage and early stage patients in two cohorts. Uh, the late stage patients received intrathecal administration. The earlier stage patients received intramuscular. In the uh, second, the, the phase 2A study, which was a dose ascending study, all the subjects received intrathecal and intramuscular administration. The safety profile in both studies was, uh, was excellent. The vast majority of AEs were low grade and self-limited, self resolving within 24 to 48 hours of treatment. And we've seen uh, very nice uh, efficacy results on ALS FRS and force vital capacity, which I'll show you on the next couple of slides. So this side, slide illustrates um, the data from the phase 2B study. Um, these were earlier stage patients. Their baseline score was 40. This is a score, uh, a scale that goes up to 48. Um, so uh, patients with a score of 40 are relatively high functioning. The patient, the intrathecal cohort from the phase 1-2 study with a baseline score of 25 was a, a poorer functioning, uh, later stage cohort. But uh, regardless of the stage of disease, what you can see illustrated here, um, we have the linear regression and slopes for the run-in period illustrated in blue, followed by the post-treatment six-month period in, in orange. And in, in, in both cases, we were able to create a meaningful deflection in the slope uh, in the rate of progression, a meaningful improvement, um, re reducing the pro progression rate by approximately 50% in both of these cohorts. Looking at lung function, we see a similar finding, um, particularly highlighted in the, in the earlier stage patients in the phase 2B study, in which we saw uh, a well over 50% reduction in the rate of progression and, and almost stabilization of lung function for the six months following treatment. In the later stage patients from the earlier study, we did see an improvement in slope at six months, but it was uh, less robust as is illustrated here. So, we believe that the, these two studies uh, certainly provide us with a, a very solid, not, not only uh, sense for the safety of the uh, of neuron um, in ALS patients, but have given us a strong efficacy signal, which uh, on the basis of which we've moved into moved into the phase two randomized double blind study um, that we are conducting here in the U.S. Um, this is at three uh, top notch academic institutions, uh, UMass. Mass General and Mayo Clinic. Uh, we enrolled all 48 subjects uh, through and in, in completed enrollment in August of this year. Uh, we just recently had the last uh, transplantation. Um, subjects are on study for six months post after the transplantation of cells. So we expect the last uh, last patient last visit to occur um, in early April, late March of 2016. Sometime after that, we should have the top line results from this study. Um, we so it, it's a blinded study. We don't know the efficacy results. We have had one data safety monitoring board look, uh, which was in, earlier in 2000, uh, 2015, and that was clean. We'll have another DSMB look in the fall as well. 
Um, the primary endpoint of this study is also safety and tolerability, and we are looking again at ALS, FRS, uh, lung function, and motor strength as uh, secondary efficacy endpoints. All of our studies to date have featured just a single dose uh, administration, whether it's been intrathecal, intramuscular, or in, in most of the patients in our studies have received both, including in the U.S. study. And we fully expect that as we move the program forward, we will want to uh, administer multiple treatments spread out over probably two to three month dosing intervals. And we are preparing for the launch of our first multi-dose study later this year in Israel. Uh, we're looking to enroll up to 24 subjects um, in this study, and these patients patients will receive three intrathecal doses um, of cells uh, administered every other month. Um, this study will implement several very important manufacturing improvements um, that, we've, uh, that we've been able to put in place over the last uh, year. First, we will be using cryopreserved cells for the first time. So in the prior studies, we've manufactured cells fresh, taken a bone marrow, processed the cells, and administered them. Uh, in, in this study, we'll be manufacturing three doses from a single bone marrow aspiration, which of course, from a cost of goods perspective and scale up perspective is, is an important step forward. We've also taken a week out of the manufacturing process, for, uh, gone from uh, four weeks total to three weeks, so a uh, substantial reduction in the time it takes to manufacture the cells, which will of course have implications for uh, cost of goods as well. Um, the, the multi-dose study, too, will have a uh, primary endpoint of safety and tolerability, but again, we will be looking at the same efficacy measures with the same kind of study design. Will there be a run-in period, uh, a treatment period, and a follow-up period? So we'll be able to make comparisons to, from the post-treatment period to the pre-treatment period. So moving beyond ALS, uh, as I mentioned, we've had uh, preclinical proof of concept data in a, in a number of uh, other neurodegenerative diseases. Um, progressive MS has been an area of interest for us. Uh, we have um, uh, seen positive data in the mouse EAE model, and progressive MS is a, a disease in which uh, it, there's an unmet medical need. Um, we know that um, approximately uh, 10 or maybe even a dozen new immunomodulatory treatments have been approved in relapsing remitting MS over the the past 20 years, um, all of those agents have failed to show benefit in progressive MS. Uh, the thinking currently is that progressive MS is more of a neurodegenerative disease than an inflammatory disease, and we think our cells are ideally suited for, uh, for this application. Um, we've also been uh, working on expanding our preclinical pop pipeline. Uh, we've, uh, we're moving um, a stroke indication into preclinical development, and we'll be looking forward to starting that study as well. And with that, I'd be happy to take questions for the last 60 seconds that I have. Thank you very much for your, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>